still kicking it with our special guest. Denzel Siggers, Atlanta yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, uh, who grew, what? Let him introduce himself. Go ahead, Denzel. Go introduce ahead, yourself. Denzel. Yeah, y'all already heard it. Denzel Siggers, yeah. a.k.a. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Broken Bones. Mr. Broken Bones. Mr. Okay. Broken Bones. Big Siggers in the building. Siggers. <laughs> Big what? See, you saying it wrong. Yeah, you well, said it all S. wrong, man. Oh, Siggers. Yeah. I'm sorry. Don't, I'm sorry. Too hype, see. I didn't mean to do that. Anyway. But the irony of the situation is you did so much on these, too. You Absolutely. grew seven, uh, well, oh. seven inches. You need to stop bro, uh, playing with me, eh? <laughs> Yo, you grew, you grew seven inches, right? Yeah. So how long, in what time frame did you get your two surgeries again? Uh, the first one took about two months, so from end of December to end of February, and then I got the second one in March, at the first week of March, and I just finished that one in, what, May? Okay. So a lot of people, when they see the surgery, like we was just talking off mic, you know what I'm saying? The initial things would be like, yo, this dude crazy. Like, why would he go and extend his leg? Especially when you hear about the surgery. The surgery mm -hmm. is violent. Like, it ain't Absolutely. some, we going in, we going to chip here, chip here. They got to break your, your They got to break your mm -hmm. leg. Top you, and bottom. You basically decided to break your legs because you wanted to be taller. And this is just something that you want to do. You had the money for it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you work hard for your money, just like anybody else. You can do what you want to with your money. So, mentally, where were you the day you decided to make this day you were sitting in the office and you knew, all right, tomorrow I am going to be taller or I'm going to be in a hell of a lot of pain, one or the other. So like I said about going on my journey or whatever, uh, I just wanted to better myself and life wasn't where I wanted it to be necessarily. I wanted to be the best version of myself. So while I'm sitting in the office and they talk to me, because as soon as I found out about it, I booked my appointment. And like really? I, like did they, I was telling did you, you say like, yo, is there something where I get my my knees done or no? Nah, I Google how, how to, like I do it every every year. Or so I Google how to get, how to get taller. taller. Since I was fifteen, I've Googled it every year. Well, last year when I Googled it, it came up limb lengthening. So I was like, what? As soon as I saw it, I researched it and booked my appointment in America that same day. Two weeks before my appointment, I found a place in Turkey that could get me taller. And like I said, like I was telling you guys, we. They could only get me to 5'10 mm -hmm. in America, and they wanted me to pay $150,000. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I saw the place in Turkey that could get me to six foot or more if I wanted, like, I was like, okay, I'm going to Turkey. And I only paid like $81,000 for just the surgery. Mm -hmm. And they had a rehabilitation center for, with a 90-day package per surgery. Now how many people prior before you did, got surgery in Turkey? Do you know? Did they tell you? Uh, they've done over like 5,000 surgeries. Wow, this is my it's first like, time hearing it. Like. They selling surgery packages. <laughs> I didn't know they did that. <laughs> but like you get a ninety, you get you get a corner. ninety day rehab <laughs> plus <laughs> plus the, <laughs> plus, the, plus. <laughs> if they got Klarna BBLs, I'm in. I'm with that. So here's so here's a question, Denzel. So was it worth it to you? I, absolutely, hundred percent. I'm exactly where I wanted to be. Now you mm -hmm. feel complete. can you play basketball? You? Not yet. I'm still under recovery. So. The thing is, the bone has to heal back in. My bone is healing pretty quick, but since I did the surgery twice, it slowed down my process a little bit. If you don't, if you not, you got to post videos of you cutting, running, jogging, all types Absolutely. of stuff. Because if you do that, you're going to end up as a spokesperson for the surgery. Yeah, like I post all the time, like my progress, me walking. Uh, I'm trying to get better at posting, but I've been very busy. But I post all the time my progress. And my thing is, you can't tell me I'm not going to make it back to 100%. I'm like, mm -hmm. God, the only one that can stop me because I'm in the gym eight hours a day every day. Now it's closer to four because I'm so busy. But, man, I'm in the gym nonstop. And I've been in the gym since the day I got to the rehabilitation center. Right. Since the day I got there, like, they were all confused. Like, man, he walking, he doing everything because right. I so wanted it that bad. Question, with you being, you know, in the gym and whatnot, are you seeing that you have to, like, change how you eat? Because you obviously you want your, your bones to kind of everything, how you, you want your body to heal in the right way. Like, are you finding yourself having to really change how you eat and what you put into your body to kind of help in the recovery? So before I start, I, when I started my journey, which was six months prior to getting the surgery, I had already uh, started changing my diet and everything. So now I'm on a completely, I've been on a completely healthy diet for the last year. I've incorporated new things that assist with bone, like regrowing bone. Mm -hmm. But other than oh, that, like certain, I've, I've like been certain on, supplements mm -hmm. and things like that. But okay. I've been on like a crazy diet for the last year just to get to where I want to be because I don't. I didn't just want to be taller. I want to be in the best shape I ever been in. Mm -hmm. I want to be in the best mental place I've ever been. Like I said, this is a whole journey for me. So let's talk about the ladies now. Let's talk about the romantic side of things <laughs> because being five five, let us know what that was like for you when it came so, down to dating and women, and now being six foot. So I will say, at five five, I actually didn't have a hard time getting women, but I 
had a hard time keeping women, but it was also because of your height. No, because of my insecurity, um. because of it, it affected. So I had other stuff going on, too, which is mm-hmm. also what led me to this journey. Uh, I had no problem getting women. I actually have been with a lot of women, but I just had a problem keeping them. So my relationships could never get to a serious point because I would always self-sabotage my relationships. Because I always had this height. weird thing mm-hmm. like uh, I don't know why I would be in the back of my head, but I'd be like, man, like. Some of the women I've dated have been very beautiful. I'm like, man, what's she doing with me? Like, I see, like, people they've been with before me. And as a man, like, obviously, you're not supposed to speak on these things, but I'm just, it's Being my honest. story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I'd be like, man, she was with dude before me. I'm just like, what you know am what I? Mean? What, yeah. what does she want from me? Is, yeah. it, is it money? Is it this or that? Like, why is she with me? And it was a thought that I couldn't necessarily control. It was just back there in the back of my head. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I've actually, like, just, I was just like, man, I took a step back from relationships because I was like, I need to fix myself. I keep hurting people and messing up like different things in my life because of my insecurity. So I decided to become, like I said, the best version of myself. So before I started this journey, I started praying a lot of different things. And today actually makes my one year like celibacy from like I've taken off a year from, you know, sex and everything just to focus on myself. That's what's up. But yeah. Uh, I guess I'm, I have somewhere that I want to be, and I want to get there as soon as possible. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm curious, real quick, I'm curious, too, when, you know, you finally heal, you get to where you need to go, and you start dating and start getting into relationships, because for so long you've been kind of self-sabotaging certain situations, how your mind is going to be. I'm just curious, I, you know, it's kind of a... I've been reading a lot on becoming a better man, a lot of things. Over the last year, I've been reading a lot, I've been studying a lot. And I've just kind of been in my own mental space. So I think once I decide to get back in the dating market, uh, things will be different from the person that I was. Mm-hmm. But right now, dating and women are not really a concern for me. I will say that my everything, women have changed towards me since I've gotten the surgery. Mm-hmm. I had, haven't figured out if it's because of height or going viral yet. <laughs> but. So, so this, I just want to <laughs> just clarity. Is it the ones that you knew already or is it pre or new when New the, women. So it's it's hectic all over. So I know the social media thing is from going viral, but mm-hmm. I get crazy DM, DMs every day from women. Uh, women have started approaching me in public. I've never been approached. I've only been approached like once or twice in my life by a woman. I usually pursue. Mm-hmm. I've been approached by mm, a lot of different women since mm-hmm. I've like gotten home. And yes, also women that used to be a part of my life have tried to make their way back. Yeah, so News and Talk 1380, WAOK, Voice in the Streets Unfiltered. If you are just tuning in, we're talking to Denzel Sigurds, Mr. Broken Legs. Um, he's grew seven inches from five, five to six feet. Really quick, um, two things before we ask you to, you know, tell how they can follow you and I stuff like that. I have another question, too. Okay. Um, one is, uh, can you explain the risk versus the reward for you? Like, okay. what were the risk and reward? And number two is... Um, what, I guess, what do you want, uh, now that you're like six feet and whatever like that, um, what do you want people to like, look at you now for, you know what I'm saying? Versus like before. So I say the risk part, uh, the risk section, uh, so studies have shown it can possibly increase the risk of arthritis later on in life which, you know, I didn't really care about that. I take very good care of myself. And there's other, there's a lot of different things that could cause arthritis later in life. So that wasn't necessarily a concern for me. But uh, also you have the risk of non-union, which is the bone doesn't grow back, which is rare. But like I said, I take such good care of myself. To me, it was just like, man, I refuse to accept these things. If it happened, I did it to myself. It was an mm-hmm. accountability thing. Mm-hmm. I accepted that before I did it. Mm-hmm. But uh, also you have the risk of permanent muscle or nerve damage if you lengthen too fast because you're stretching everything out. Everything's being stretched, and I did it twice. So my entire leg went from here to here, so all the nerve endings is being stretched, and say they tore or got damaged, you have permanent issues, mm. which, yeah. yeah. And the portion of what do I want people to look to me for uh, I posted my story really so I can encourage other people to do what they want because it's really a lot of negative context that come along with men trying to do things to better themselves, especially cosmetic things. It's all this men should just be this and that, that I don't care. I don't care what people think about me. I'm just like, man, I'm doing my best to be me. And whoever don't like it, most of the time, I, 
probably don't know you anyway, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, I want to be known for my music and more so for motivational speaking rather than just being Mr. Broken Bones and everything. So that's my journey right now. And my last question is, um, how was your family feeling right now? How to have how have they reacted uh, to all of this? Not a lot of my family is confused because they never knew they. Everyone thinks it's about women. They always they were like, you know, you didn't have a problem with women. You had women all the time. But my mother understands completely. Apparently, she knew this was an insecurity for me. She just never voiced it. Mm. But my mother loves the fact that I uh, I've changed as a person entirely. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Who I was before and for a lot of people who watch my social media and a lot of my pictures before I never smiled I never liked to smile but I for some reason felt like men didn't smile I had all different types of thoughts now when you look at my social media all you see is me smiling happy loving life because I'm grateful for the life I've been given and all the opportunities that have been presented to me oh, that's right okay. so tell the people how they can follow you get in contact with you listen to your music all that good stuff so you can follow me, uh, Mr. Broken Bones, all one word, and with a Z instead of an S at the end. And that's on TikTok and Instagram. And I've just recently started making my music. So that will be dropping very soon. Definitely, definitely. Right. Well, Denzel, appreciate you tapping in with us. Anytime you got new stuff coming up or you want to come holler at us, you got a, a free spot, man. Thank you. Thank all you. right. It's Mr. Broken Bones, News and Talk, yes, 1380, WALK, Voice in the Streets, Unfiltered. We'll be back.